Hello, it's Thursday again. Um, I feel like I'm being stalked here with my model standing too close. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move her back here and just straighten her up so that she's looking respectable but isn't quite sitting over my shoulder. Hi everyone, nice to see you all popped in. Um, we are, a couple of weeks ago I had said, oh, I'll do lives every second week. And then what ended up happening is there was quite a few things that happened one after each other. One of them being the fact that we moved up clue four, which is the final clue of the Hawthorne knit along. Um, so anyone who's on the Hawthorne knit along, you would have gotten clue four today. And it did make a lot of sense because clue three was pretty much the same length as clue two, because one did the upper part of the back at the front and the other the back anyway, but they were the same length. So there was no reason why you'd get an extra um, week for clue three. So clue four got released. Hey, good morning from Western New York. It's dreary there as well. Yeah, we're the same here. Um, all this week, I feel like I'm having one of these weeks where I'm a little bit in Groundhog Day, where I just kind of, I get up, I sit down, moving a bit sluggishly and I reach the end of the day and if anything my to-do list is longer than when I started it's a little bit frustrating but I'm trying to just roll with it and not get too caught up in the fact that it feels like a week that keeps adding things to the list rather than taking them away um hey from Chile I don't often have people from Chile it's probably really early for you there thank you for joining us um but I, I'm, I don't know if it's the weather or what else is going on here, but I definitely have a sense of kind of being mentally compressed. South Carolina, hot and sunny in Northern California. Oh, don't say that to us here. This week, autumn has hit full force in Ireland. I mean, that's the best way of putting it. We've had um, winter storm, well, autumn storms, I suppose I should say over the last couple of, of days. Um, Sunday, there was such bad flooding in the city that um, Laura, in fact, came back and got stuck in a traffic jam because the main roads got closed with very, very major flooding in spots where we've never actually seen flooding before. So, um, and then it hasn't really brightened up since then. It's been a little bit damp and very, very oppressive because it's dark, no sunshine and everything the temperature is high so as in it's still in irish temperatures between 14 to 16 degrees but because it's so damp you feel cold but the heating's not kicking on because the temperature's not cold enough so it's this weird double thing oh hey from lisbon i'm looking through here oh you're asking what's the sweater i'm wearing this is my cozy sweater that i pull out when the weather is cold and i feel like i need to wear a hug it is my rusty lines so it is this one is done in yoth yarn but if you wanted to do something similar this the original version of um of rusty lines is is done without the cowl but there's a cowl option where it's kind of more open neck and it's done no, it's not up here, but it's in a newer worsted um, in that rusty Harvest Moon color, but it's got an open neck. This one I did in a bigger gauge. I left the pattern the same, but I used a larger gauge. So it meant that it got a little bit wider than the original pattern, but the neck got too far open. So I picked up the stitches around here and then just not quite the same as this because this one is in a mistake rib, but this one I just did a tube of stockinette stitch, I think about five inches and it filled it in and it changed from a neck that was too open to something that was kind of really cozy. And the one that I want to pull out when it's a bit dreary and I feel like I just need a little bit sweater love for the day. I'm probably not the only one who, um, who feels like that. I've got a handful of sweaters, this one and the other one that kind of does that for me is Durkula, the one in Blasta. I think it's because it just the Blasta yarn is very it, it's very light but very cozy so it feels very snuggly to me so Blasta is a big snuggle sweater or you know a, sn a snuggle yarn I should say when I feel cold um, and that will get me through the day um, and the animals love it too when I'm wearing something nice and thick like this the kitten I have a kitten anyone who spots some of my Instagrams over the weekend will know 
I've got, we call her the kitten. She's over a year now, but she's as crazy as ever. If you pick her up, she sits like this, a little bit like a baby. But then the second you start moving, she just crawls up and she sits across here. And if you've got a coat or a thick sweater, she just drapes herself around here. If I lean down to get something, she'll just reposition herself to here, sometimes even halfway down your back. And so then when you're standing up, you have to go really slowly because she climbs back up onto your shoulder until she's back up here again. She's an absolute sweetheart, completely and utterly raving mad but so much fun. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying her. I enjoy having a kitten around. So that's my cozy sweaters and kittens, my two must haves for when the weather is miserable and when I'm feeling a little sluggish and a, on a mental go slow is probably the best way to put it. That's what this week has felt like for me. It's good in other ways. I've had, feel like processing time, thinking time, but not much has actually gotten done. But I've done lots of thinking, so that's probably good. Lots of planning for future seasons, but just nothing actually happening. So if you're tuning in for the sweater knit along, hey Laura, just spotted you in there. Nice to see your face. Um, Hawthorne sweater knit along. We're on clue four. Clue four came out this morning, and it's the sleeves and the cowl. So this is always the fun part because you're almost done. You've got, you've got the main sweater on, you can try it on and you know that it fits you. So now you're just finishing it off so that you get to the point where you can wear it. So for the sleeves, these are picked up from the armhole. The one thing that you need to watch out for the armhole is see the way the front of the sweater, it folded back. So normally when you've got an armhole, you've got where the seam line is, is going to be the top of your sleeve, underarm is going to be over here. So if I tell you to pick up stitches starting at the underarm, pick halfway up to the top and then the other part coming down the other side. Makes a lot of sense because it's obvious where the top of it is. I've tried to point out several different times here on this one that the top of the sleeve is not in the usual spot because that seam line is sitting towards the back. So if you made that the top, you're going to have very lopsided sleeves because you're going to end up with um, too many stitches on one side versus the other. So what you want to do is lay this out, you know where the bottom of this is, and then flatten it out so that you can see where the top is going to be here and put a pin in there. So that's the point where you're going to have as the top of your sleeve. So half your stitches picked up this side and half of them get picked up that side. And that way you're going to have a balanced sleeve with the top actually where you want it to hit on your arm. That's explained a little bit more in the videos, but it might help as well here kind of to, to view what's going on. Um, and that's really the only thing that's going to be in any way different for this particular sleeve, because the rest of it is all going to be just picking up those stitches, half on each side, joining in the round, and then let me put it up here. We've got our lovely sand stitch is what's worked all the way down. So you make sure, obviously it's in the round because we're doing a top down in the round. So you use the sand stitches for in the round. And on the bottom here, the decreases happen at the start and at the end of each round. And that means that when you hold it out here, top stays straight across and the bottom decreases across this way. We're doing double decreases again. And that is just for ease because when you've got a stitch pattern, that has multiples of two stitches. If you do decreases in two stitches, it's going to mean that you never have to really mess around with your stitch pattern because it's always going to stay the same as you go along. So if you take two stitches out and the next round starts with a purl, you don't have to worry about, oh, if I take them one out, is it a knit or a purl? It's going to continue on as though you didn't have those decreases. So huge advantage to taking two lots of decreases out at the same time. If you want to adjust for your arm, all you need to do is if you want to make it longer, but you want to keep the same amount of decreases, just space these out a bit more. If you want to make it shorter, other way around, you take a few rounds out between each of these decreases. If you want the cuff to be smaller, then you add in more decreases. Bigger, you add in less decreases. So it's top down, you can keep trying it on. So if it looks like it's getting a little bit too long, what you can end up doing is then maybe space your last few decreases a little closer, take a small bit length off, but still get to the actual amount of stitches you want at the end. 
and then you finish off with your mistake rib which the nice thing about it is it flows really nicely from the actual sand stitch because it's all knit pearl multiples so one just flows straight into the other and this is one of my favorite bits we've got a tubular bind off or it's sometimes known as a sewn bind off but it works very nicely with a any form of one by one ribbing no mistake ribbing is a little bit different but if you haven't done it before i do have i believe i've got a um tutorial on the website but it's also in the knit along itself you get a tutorial on it you thread the yarn and you almost act like you're doing kitchener stitch between them but they're all on the needles sounds more complicated than it is but it gives you a very smooth bind off coming up to the edge here and a nice bit of stretch. Uh, let me know in the comments there if any of you have done a tubular bind off before or if you liked it, if you hated it. Um, just let me know what you thought of the actual tubular bind off. It was one of these things where it always feels like it's going to be more complicated in my head than it is and the reality is that it's, it's quite straightforward to do and it does give a lovely end effect for a one by one ribbon. So that's the sleeves. You've got one one each side, usually. We've been having a little bit of chats on Twitter and on Facebook about um, garments and what people like to knit. And somebody was talking about the fact that they actually gather up all of their sleeve knitting and she's at the moment knitting four sleeves, which sounds a little bit suspicious. So, but she did swear that it was for two garments. Um, but I don't, I don't think I could handle it that way because sleeves are take a little bit of stamina to get through because there's a lot of going around on the same thing and it feels like it goes on forever. Um, I'm just looking in here. We've got, you love the tubular bind off. Liz, you haven't tried it, but will you, you will now. Oh, I think you love it, Liz. It's, it is a very, very nice edging on it. Um, Dara, you love the tubular bind off. It makes such a beautiful edge. It, yeah, it really does. And it sounds much more intimidating than it is. It's really just a variation on the Kitchener stitch with one by one. Um, and Marguerite Ellie's, you love the tubular bind off too. It's very easy to make. It is, and it sounds more complicated in writing than it is, but one of those things where as you sit down and start working through it, it's very straightforward, very easy to do and pretty intuitive. And it, because you're doing it with the needle, a darning needle, you can also control the tension a good bit so you can make sure that it's not too tight, you know? Um, so anybody else, what, if you have any other questions on the Hawthorne here, just pop them up there. I'm happy to answer. Um, but that is the sleeve. Um, cowl is just a tube. Let me move this up here. I'm going to move to the side. Um, this one is just a straight up tube. Pick up stitches around, work to mistake rib. And you'll actually see here the inside of this, let me pull it up close, um, looks a little bit different because the mistake rib looks different on both sides. It's still really attractive and it actually, without doing anything different, it's almost like introducing yet another stitch pattern into it because you, like when I wear it anyway, I tend to fold it like this. You may prefer to wear it like this possibly. Um, there's many different ways of wearing your cowl. You could also, if you have extra, I'm not doing a very good job of folding that. Um, if you had a lot of extra yarn, you could even do a couple of extra inches, do a double fold. Or what, I mean, what we've done with this is you start off with a smaller needle for the first several inches so that it kind of stands up a little bit, which is what you want. Then I moved to a bigger needle for the next uh, several sections. And then I also did a tubular bind off along here, which gives a nice little bit of stretch, which is really important with the cowl, because if you have a lovely drapey cowl, but then that is actually tight, it doesn't work so well. If you wanted to make this a little bit deeper, but you wanted to kind of add the drape, I'd actually even keep going with needle size increases. So possibly even getting another one or two needle sizes bigger, because as it comes down here, the further out it goes, the more you want it to drape or come down the front view here. So that's what working with different needle sizes can do for this. When we were launching this, I had quite a few people ask if you could leave the cowl out because they didn't like anything up around their necks. And you absolutely can. Because at this, you can see here, what you have is just this uh, neck edge down around here. So if you don't put that in, all you want to do is just pick up stitches in the same way and just do a very short amount of ribbing 
and I would suggest even finishing off the tubular bind off again there to give you a nice edging but you just can make it a very very small little edging there just enough to tidy it up if you don't even want to do that if you wanted something even less intrusive if you like the way the neck looks when you reach that point pick up stitches and do an apply die cord would work very well because it's just going to give a clean edge but it's not going to add any depth so there's lots of different options for finishing off the neck depending on your own personal taste for me i couldn't i wouldn't have been inclined to go without a cowl neck because i just i like the cozy so if you're knitting on this um, or even if you're thinking about it let me know in the comments there whether you think you prefer a full deep cowl neck or if you're going to go with the crew neck option or maybe you're considering going a little bit deeper um, I th i'm always finding it very interesting to hear the different options that people have decided to go with so just pop them up there and let us know um, the other things i'm gonna put my lady back here to sit behind me she's not too intrusive there if you're on my newsletter last week you'll have spotted that um because we've got one of our suppliers has had a fairly significant increase in the uh, in his charges from the start of next month our prices are going to be going up in those three ranges so the newer fiber spates and coupnets and we've also decided to discontinue a couple of the lines which means that those ones have had big discounts so the two that you will find on the site with big discounts are there's the Koopnitz DK and the second one is the Fiber Spates Fairy Wings um, and so both of those are going to be kind of very big discounts if you want to go take a look and try them out the fibers um, this one here the Fairy Wings uh, that is used in the shawl uh, Shiog stripes so it's with Nua um, just it's a double garter stitch and the Koopnitz DK, uh, it's a merino with, um, I think it's 20% nylon in it. And that is excellent for things like children's garments. I think it makes a very, very good uh, children's garment yarn. So it's like, you like my rolled collar. Thank you. Actually, the rolled collar, that could even be another option if you put in there. If you just wanted to go ahead and say, I don't want anything with ribbing, you could put in just a rolled collar edging. Because when you were taking control of your own knitting and knitting your own garments. Edging is one place that you can totally um, go ahead and just make things your own, change them up. Even if you mess up or you don't like the way it turns out, you, it's very straightforward to take it out because it's not gonna rip out any of the rest of the garment, just the actual section you're working on. Liz, you're not a cowl neck person. You hate having your neck covered. Um, but the more you look at it, it's nice and loose. So you're going to do the cowl and try it on. And if it's not comfy, you rip it out. Yeah, that makes total sense. If you want it looser again, even from the start, you could go ahead and work with the bigger needle size. Or alternatively, to make it to keep it loose, loose and draped a bit more, um, even do it before you start your ribbing, do around where there's increases. So there's a lot more stitches. And the more stitches you have, the further out from your neck is going to sit and it becomes more of a draped front. So think more stitches, larger needles, and that way you'll get the effect of the cowl, but you won't necessarily have it up and around your neck. Um, so that's that would be the best advice I'd probably have for you in relation to that. We were, if anyone is looking at our feed, we had a little hint yesterday talking about something that's going to be coming tomorrow. So um, we've been looking um, at combining different yarns and different things, you know, how you can take what's a fairly basic yarn or a yarn that's maybe too fine to comfortably be used by itself. And as you start combining them, the sum of their parts is often more than each individual yarn. And so the ones we've been playing with were Bloss Delight, which is, and spun and done igual. it's a single ply it is really it's got a lovely feel to it blooms very nicely um, but it's quite a fine yarn and it's going to be it's good for kind of intermediate transitioning garments but it's not going to be terribly warm for winter wear and we combined it together with a fluffier mohair one so the two ones we've been playing with are the cumulus are the cabrito from manos 
and the other one, I don't have it here, but it's the Ito one, Senso one, which is also going to be brush mohair with some silk in it. And those combined with Blasta create a really, really luxurious fabric. It's just, it's got bloom, it's got a huge amount of warmth, but it's still really, really light. And both me and Laura fell in love with the yarn. Um, I've been seeing some test knit calls going up for, uh, there's a brioche uh, sweater that I was working on with it that we're currently um, getting tested. And then the other thing that Laura gets started with was, I'm, go I'm not gonna show you the full thing because this is launched tomorrow, but I'm just going to show you the fabric here. And it is lush, is the best way of putting it. And this is going to be coming out tomorrow. So keep an eye out on the website. And it uses that combination of Blastolite and Capriccio. And it is got a little bit of cables, a little bit of pattern stitch, a little bit of garter. And that's all I'm going to show you. The rest is going to be up tomorrow. It'll be on the website. So keep an eye out for it. Um, and it was designed by Laura. So um, we'll pull her on next week and she'll talk to you about that. So I'll be back here same time next Thursday, but this time Laura will be here and she's gonna talk about her new design. Um, and thank you for joining me today. If there's any questions that pop up um, from, the, uh, from the live here, I'm gonna post this up here. Also gonna post it over in YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a really useful place to be able to make sure you see any videos I'm doing because you can subscribe. So just, um, just kind of jump in and take a look. Liz, don't tempt you anymore. <laughs> That's our job. Our job is to tempt you with these lovely knitted things. Fortunately, you're an extremely fast knitter, Liz. So you've got better chance than most of actually of keeping up with things. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you next week. Bye.